All right, guys, I got another little project here. This is a this is actually a bit of a rarity for me. This is actually paying paying work, kind of a friend of a friend kind of thing. Asked, you know, looking for a welder, and uh, uh, he got my phone number and uh, sent me a few text messages, and uh, now I'm uh, building a little contraption for him. Uh, what I'm building is a boat lift. Now it's for a very small sailboat, I believe. It's 12, 10 to 12 feet in length. And the owner says it probably weighs at most five to 700 pounds with uh, uh, no passengers in it. So this is basically the beginning of it. We got some two by two square tubing, eighth inch wall. I had the metal shop uh, cut it to eight feet for me and they nailed it. It's, it's right on eight feet. And I just had them do that just because it makes it easier to transport in my pickup truck. The only thing I've done so far is just wipe the grease off. It's got that oily grease coating that uh, helps it uh, prevent rust uh, while it's in transportation. So uh, I've got that done. And the only other thing I've done is I cut these two 36 inch pieces uh, and I'm actually gonna cut them in half again, make a pair of 18s. That was uh, just a piece of tubing that was uh, already cut at the store and it was just shy of eight feet uh, so i'll get into all this let me show you a picture real quick of uh what i'm going to be building I'll, this is a picture of his uh existing boat lift and you can see how it's bent in the front so we're going to rebuild that for him we're just going to make him all new ones i've got some half inch hot rolled bar stock here and that'll be used underneath to make a, a little bit of a gusset, just to add some some strength and rigidity uh, to this square tube. And I think this should be enough. Um, basically, his old one was working fine until he lifted his boat out of the water, and then he and another guy jumped in the boat to get some stuff out while it was suspended, and that's what bent uh, his uh, existing boat lift. So he wants it to be able to support the weight of the boat, plus uh, plus two people in there. So weight of the boat plus throwing another 200 pounds. So we're talking, oh, we're still talking less than a thousand pounds of total weight. So let's get started on this. I just got to cut these in half again, make a pair of 18s. And uh, instead of just, just describing how I'm going to do this, I'll just jump into it and uh, we'll start doing this. It's a pretty cake job, to be honest with you. And we're just going to MIG weld it. Uh, nothing fancy here. So, uh, so let's get started. So as I just mentioned, I got these two uh, pieces of uh, tubing, it's inch and a half, uh, just hot rolled electric welded tubing, eighth inch wall thickness, nothing fancy here. All this stuff, it's it's all just 1018 mild steel. This, you know, it's not supporting a, a bunch of weight. We're just trying to keep it uh, affordable. So, uh, like I said, I'm just gonna cut these two pieces in half, uh, cut them down to 18 inches. So let's get started on that. So I've got a few of my pieces set up here on my work table. These uprights are not gonna be perpendicular to the square tube. The customer actually wants them uh, to cant out just a little bit. So the total width of the slip that he puts his boat into is eight feet, eight inches. And as I mentioned before, this square tubing, uh, I had the metal store cut it to exactly eight feet. So I've got the square set up going two inches out. So we'll just line up this round tube right there on the edge of the square tube and just tilt it out until we're lined up out here it looks like there's a gap in the in, in the camera but if, if you're looking at it straight down it's up against that so that's going to give me a total width up here of eight feet four inches that's going to give two inches of play on either side of the slip so i've got that basically what i need to do now is just mark this tubing because now we gotta take just a little angle cut on all of these uh, pieces of round tubing. And uh, then we should be about ready to weld them in place. So Swag Off-Road, who's uh, the little company that made this uh, little table here for the uh, porta band they actually sell a miter gauge that goes in these little slots. And I really wish that I'd, I'd ordered one. Uh, I'm probably gonna go back and order one in the very near future, because uh, that would be perfect for making these little angle cuts. So for now, I'm just gonna have to eyeball it 
this isn't a very this project doesn't have to be super ultra precise uh, so eyeballing it will be just fine but in the future it would be nice to have a miter gauge in there So just a quick test fit of all of these pieces. Make sure everything lines up. Everything's looking pretty good. I was thinking I might have to dress them a little bit with the grinder uh, to get the angle exactly where I need it, but it seems to me that all of these are in uh, pretty good shape. So we just have to dress them, just add a little bevel, you know, grind off the mill scale, add a little bevel for welding. But uh, other than that, I don't think I need to dress the ends of them at all. Uh, to get the angle correct so we got that done and uh, let's move on okay so before we get to any welding there's a couple things that I needed to, to do here the customer wants to add a piece of wood uh, that's gonna span the distance between the two cradles now we're just gonna use a 2 by 6 this is just a little shorty piece that I had kicking around but I'm gonna go ahead and mark the tubes and drill the holes to secure these, this two by six in place and we'll assemble this at the at the dock uh, but I just wanted to go ahead and drill those holes now I'm gonna set the board two inches in from the edge and then I'm gonna mark my first hole at three inches come back at six inches so these are gonna be through bolts so I'll have to drill basically four holes per side, so I gotta drill 16 holes. So I'll just get my square out, we'll square up, get the center line of the tube, and just start punching holes in there. So I've got my three 16 inch pilot holes drilled, and I'm actually gonna drill all of these holes out to a half inch. And I'm probably gonna use 5 16 maybe 3 8 inch hardware. And the reason I'm drilling these holes so big for clearance is because when I'm helping him reassemble this thing back at the dock, the last thing I wanna deal with is you know, trying to get you know, a 5 16 inch bolt through a 5 16 inch hole hanging over the water and trying not to fall in and trying not to drop my wrench. So I'm gonna drill these for clearance uh, that'll just make it easier to reassemble uh, at the dock. Okay, I got all 16 holes drilled. Both tubes. Both sides. Have I ever told you guys how much I hate drilling holes? Well, if I have it, I hate drilling holes. So, thankfully this part of the project's done, and uh, let's move on. So I'm just going to start the weld prep, and I'm going to grind all the mill scale off of all four ends of these tubes, these two ends and the other two at the other end. For that, I'm just going to use, I, I just use a, I call it a stone, but it's the composite uh, grinding disc. For flat surfaces, I find that it's just much faster. It makes a hell of a racket, and it's quite messy, but it really gets it done quick now but for the tubes we just need to get you know a little bit of this rust off of course the mill scale and then add a bevel uh, for welding for the tubes I find that the flap wheels do work better so I'll switch I'll switch out the stone to the flap disc when I'm doing this but for right now I'm just gonna start grinding the mill scale off of the uh, square tubing So our upright is mocked in place. I've got a piece of quarter inch here underneath uh, this piece of one and a half inch tubing. Uh, if you remember, uh, this is one and a half inch uh, tubing and this is two inch square. So there's a half inch difference between the two. If I want to center up uh, the piece of tubing 
uh, the, the round tube on the square tube, uh, basically it's a quarter inch on each side. So I spaced up the round tube a quarter inch uh, to center it up uh, on this square tube. So I haven't welded that yet. What I'm gonna work on now is I've got some more tubing. This is actually inch and a quarter, still eighth wall. And I just picked this up because I knew I was gonna need it. Uh, the diameter is really not crucial. It's predominantly the wall thickness. This is uh, certainly strong enough for what we're trying to do here. I've made a mark 10 inches in from the edge of the square tubing. Now it's a little bit arbitrary. All, all, all we really need is that uh, we're putting a two by six in here, uh, if you remember. Uh, two by six, it's not two by six, it's like one and a half by five or five and a half. So we just need at least that clearance, at least enough clearance to get that two by six in here. So I just went ahead and chose 10 inches uh, just because it, it works out. So we're gonna do a little bit of a triangular brace on this material. So what I'm just doing right now, is I'm getting the back edge of this tubing, I'll get my arm out of the way, back edge of the tubing lined up with this surface here on the square tubing. And I'm gonna come up here and get this edge of the tubing lined up with this edge of the upright tubing. And I'm gonna make a mark, you know, I'm really just kinda eyeballing this, but for this project that's close enough now that, I, I've drawn it right in line, parallel with this surface of the square tubing. Up here, I'm actually gonna do it a little bit differently. Because this is gonna be a coped joint, meaning I'm gonna have to take the grinder and make a radius in this tubing for my rough cut, I'm gonna only, I'm not going, I'm not drawing my line parallel with this edge, I'm going in uh, about 3 eighths of an inch. So that, we're gonna put this in the bandsaw. We're just gonna lop that off. We're gonna lop that off. And then we're gonna have to take this and cope uh, this side so we get a nice fit up, at least a decent fit up around this tubing. So we're gonna put this in the uh, bandsaw and make our cuts and then start doing some coping.